Hey there everyone, Pally here, and welcome back. It's time for another Star Citizen video, and today we are getting to know the Drake Caterpillar. If you watched my 2.6 update video, I did a little bit of rough breakdown on this ship, uh, but today we're going to be going into it a lot more in depth. We'll see all the rooms, all the neat little features. We'll talk about the design specs of it, what they're aiming to do with this ship, what it can currently do, and so on. So yep, this is the Drake Caterpillar. This is probably the second of the large ships, depending on how you look at it. Uh, this would be, I think, crew, uh, destroyer class, not quite cruiser class in terms of size. Because uh, if you look at something like the Polaris, the Polaris is more of a cruiser in that role. I, I, I don't know. I, I would, I'd say this is probably a destroyer class ship for scale and everything. The other one being the Starfarer. Now this compared to the Starfarer in terms of size, the Starfarer does take up more cubic footage. Uh, it's taller and wider, whereas this one is longer. Now whereas the Starfarer takes up more cubic footage, this ship at least feels to have more usable space. In other words, more space that you as the player can interact with, primarily because the main role of this ship is cargo hauling, transportation. Now, it is labeled as a combination search and rescue, exploration, cargo hauler, and slash pirate ship. This is going to be popular among the pirates. But the, the center loadout that we have right here today is primarily a cargo hauler. We'll go ahead and we'll start at the very front. So up front here, we do have the initial, the front bay access, and we can kind of open it right now. Go ahead and hit that and that'll open up. Now this front bay door will or it does have a windshield on it. I Meaning you can fly with this open and the rest of the ship will stay under atmosphere. Uh, one of the things I'm gonna point out, so all the doors I'm opening here today, so there's doors here and then all along the outer sides here, these doors open, but they're not quite finished or at least the control interface is not finished for them. So this door should have three states. There should be the closed state that it was in before, the open state that it's in now, and then a lowered state where it comes down like a lift gate for a box van, box truck type thing, comes down to the ground here. That is not implemented yet. Either the, the ship design itself doesn't have it yet, but I think more than likely, so you can see here the new interface for the interaction, the use button here. This is supposed to have like a mouse wheel roll to select different options. So open, close, lower. It's not there. So I'm assuming that that's what's missing, not the actual ship design. Uh, but that's the front end entrance. Now we can't actually open the outside ones from here, so we'll go ahead. Actually, let's stay up here. These front guys, looking forward here, they kind of look like weapon stations or whatever. These are actually just sensor pods. Uh, these are in the manual, in the brochure. They talk about these as like forward sensors so that the, the ship sensors on, say, the command module there had a tough time being accurate out in front of the ship here so you would end up running the ship into things, colliding with things. These are just forward sensor pods. Up top there, we do have a turret, so part of the primary armament of this ship. Uh, so that is a turret with two class four lasers on it. There are actually two turrets on the ship. There's one top front and one lower rear back there. Now the ship is made modular or will be modular in time. Uh, so you can see here, there are pods labeled actually module four, three, two, and one. They move out from the front. Uh, all of these right now with this ship, all these modules are just carrying transport modules uh, and all four of them are identical. So we don't have to go through them too much, but we will get inside. Here is your command module right here. There is kind of a lower observation deck there. The cockpit is actually up there in that upper part. The command module does have a few lasers itself that the pilot will be in control of. They are not fully implemented yet. They do fire. They look to be size two lasers, I'm thinking. Uh, I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head what those size two lasers are. If we come on back around here, you'll see there's actually engines on the command module. There's actually an airlock right here. You can see there's kind of a pillar sticking down here. There's an airlock that can isolate and separate the main hull from the command module. What this is for is if you're being boarded, your ship's being destroyed or something, you are able to actually abandon your cargo or theoretically in time, you're able to abandon the main chassis of the ship and fly off in the command module. The command module itself works as a self-contained ship. In fact, there's right there what would be a secondary access door that's not implemented yet, uh, but if you de decompress, de disconnect from the rest of the ship, that would be another door to get in and out. Work our way back, there's the rear turret. 
And the retort does spin around. It's not just facing the rear. That's just the way it is landed. Uh, that will fire forward. Uh, back here are the primary engines. Yep, right there. I like these engines a lot. They kind of got a really cool yellow real glow to them. I'll, I'll interlace some footage here from flying around outside the ship, uh, but I like the, I love the look of these engines and the, the lighting effect on these engines is more what I really like about them. Apologies for a bit of a rough edit there. Right now this build is very unstable. We're getting a lot of disconnects from it. So that's what happened there. I was talking about the engines. The outer engines here on the outside, they remind me of very large skilled up versions of the Drake Cutlass, which would make sense. So you have two larger skilled up ones and then two in the back. You then have kind of an offset to the command deck. You have like an observation deck here. This apparently is going to be a command site or a command deck for a tractor beam. That's what this here is right now visually representing. This is going to be a, a tractor beam. And you'll be able to, if I back up enough, you'll see there's actually like a little deck up there with a, a view. So what the thought process is, someone can open these side pylons. You can have some type, something floating around out here in space on this side, use the tractor beam and look, move it directly into one of the bays. And that's the whole point of this. The, the tractor beam is way out and someone in that little bay up there would have line of sight to grab items and move them into to the bay of the ship and that would be like the search and rescue or the the retrieval type process um, of this ship now to get in the actual ship itself the best way to do it right now at least because half the lifts don't work is just in front of the rear turret there is an elevator go ahead and click that now this ship is i'm gonna say it's 90-ish percent complete. There are some small issues with the ship. One of them you may actually have seen right there when this lift was coming down. The bottom texture disconnects disconnect sometimes from the floor and it goes in different var variants. How far it disconnects can, can change is what I'm trying to say. Something I actually want to point out. So in terms of the details, these larger ships, at least coming from the Starfarer, we know they're putting a lot of detail into these ships, but check out these pistons on this thing. And this is a theme that runs throughout the entire ship, or at least for the most part, these pneumatic pistons running. In fact, you can see them back here. If we get off the there, you can see them here on the landing gear strut, and then the rear landing gears also have a similar design. And you'll see these throughout the doors. I, I really like these. Uh, I think they're pretty darn cool. They give the ship a very construction site feel. You know, they, they, it feels like a piece of heavy machinery, a very industrial feel with these these pistons on that. I'll go ahead and come on back up in. Yeah, so this here is the main entrance in, or the main way for the crew to get into the ship. You're obviously not gonna be bringing much cargo in because you have small doors here. Uh, let's go ahead from here. We're gonna move to the very front of the ship and we will work our way back. So we're gonna ignore that room for the time being. So this here is module one, two, don't close the main door. Now we're in module three, module four, and then the front access of the ship. So this is the very front of the ship on the right hand side and left hand side likely we have ways to open this bay. Watch these uh, pneumatics again as we go. So we're going to hit that and then we're going to back up. I, I think that's just really impressive. Whoever animated that did all that together. That's really well done. Uh, we can close it on this side. Now, obviously it is supposed to lower down, but it doesn't do it right now. Go ahead and hit that there. You'll come back up and come on back in. Okay, that's about it for the front of the ship. There is a little observation deck up there. We'll get to that in a moment. You know, some neat electronics here, but nothing else really to see. Now for the modules, we only have to do these one time. So each module down on the lower part, they have their own little control that's gonna open up and this will bring it out. Now again, this dock is supposed to be able to lower down. You could supposed to be able to use this again as like a, uh, a lift gate. Doesn't animate, doesn't work right now. Uh, hit that and close it. And there's another one on this side. That's gonna open that up. Now you will notice there obviously is a catwalk across there. So some things will fit on on one side, some things won't. We were messing around and you can get like an MPUV can come in on this side of the ship and land in here. And you could get an MPUV right here, which is the little cargo hauler slash personal transport, but you can't come in this side because of the catwalk. It just doesn't fit. Uh, but it's something to keep in mind when you are loading the ship up. One side is restricted from the other. Up top here, we have controls for all the doors. 
So we can control both doors on either side from here. There's also a little terminal right now. It doesn't do anything. I imagine this is like an RP type thing. So a quartermaster or uh, whatever, whoever's in charge of your cargo uh, could have like the manifest for what is held in this module right here. You'd be able to tell what that is. Here is the door up to the front and here's just another control panel to open and close that front. So again, you could have like your, uh, your quartermaster can stay on these upper catwalks, open, close all the doors, keep track of everything going on. There we go. And right here to the right of that is the upper turret. Climb in there, let this take us on up. The turret is actually one of the better ones that I've been in in this game. It has a fairly good field of view. You can see here there's, there's windows all the way around, fairly good field of view. The control panel doesn't block too much of your view, but it also feels protected. Uh, some of them, there's ones where the view is wide open, but you don't feel protected. There's other ones where you can't hardly see anything, like on the cutlass. This one's kind of a nice middle ground, I feel. Uh, we'll see what those lasers can actually do. I don't think those lasers are going to do much to dissuade fighters. Uh, class 4 lasers are... In a turret, I think you're gonna have a tough time hitting a fighter, but anything medium size and larger, say starting with like a Cutlass and above, so Cutlass, Freelancer, Warden, any of those type ships, I think that'll do a fairly good job of protecting it against. Uh, and that's basically it for the primary modules of this. So you got the front and then four cargo pods or modules that will all be exactly the same with this loadout come on through here. Now we're going to go ahead, we'll jump back down, we'll start at the bottom and work our way up to the command deck. So right here is the initial crew quarters, the crew habitat if you would. You have room for four people, four bunks, table, uh, bathroom, sink, all of that, cooking area, some storage, some safety supplies, uh, and some terminals I'm assuming for monitoring the news, you know, maybe whatever, or ship status. Uh, through this door here we have the original little Launch area we came up, so our ramp, a little weapon rack there. Work our way back through. There's just a little access hatch here. Right now there's nothing in here. I think this will probably be implemented into when they go into like the advanced ship repairs and where parts of the ship can be damaged. Something in here could be damaged requiring someone to come repair. And in the very back here we have the generators or the, the engines. These are pretty cool. These remind me of when I was in the army. These look like V8 mass, mass generators. They look like big V8 diesel generators uh, that I think are pretty cool. Four on each side. There's nothing we can actually interact with on the generators, which is fine, or the engines. Uh, there is an engineer terminal. Uh, we'll click on it real quick, but this is, if you've seen any of the other videos, you've seen this terminal. Oh, it doesn't want to behave right now, does it? Okay, we're probably about to disconnect, so we'll have to do another edit here. Uh, but you've seen this terminal. It's where you can pull it up. You can adjust the power to the front, to the back, to the left, to the right, all that. Right here is the lower turret. I'm not going to bother getting in for right now, but that would be the lower turret. And here is a set of stairs that lead to the upper deck. We're actually going to climb up this ladder here, though, and stay in the back of the ship. So we get up here. Another edit because of another disconnect, but like I was saying, we have another cargo or another crawl space here area with nothing in it. But right in front of that is now the power generator or the distribution unit. They're they're calling this the power generator. Obviously, the engines generate the power, and this is kind of more your distro. Uh, this would be your shields and everything. This thing's pretty cool. Uh, I like this. I think the one in the Starfare is a good bit more fancy. Looks a lot more high tech than this, but this fits Drake quite nicely. Through this side, we have a server rack area, so some computer server racks. I imagine the game is actually running on something that doesn't look too far from these. Uh, some terminals, nothing we can interact with. This is the other way from the server generator room, just another access area to the main gantry. So this is the primary hallway. Down through here will lead us back out to the front cargo modules right here. This here is a current docking collar. Uh, this is, would be the, the, the upper docking collar. There's no lower docking collar, so the only docking collar. This has not been implemented. Like I said, the ship's 90 some percent done, uh, but you can't actually open this, use the ladder, or anything like that. These are the stairs back down to the engine room, as we looked up. And up here is that upper observation deck across from the, 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 the commands bridge uh, over here. This would be where you're controlling the, uh, the oh, drawing a brain fart, the uh, tractor beam. So you can see here with from here, you have a pretty good sight along the side of the ship. So if someone opens up bay two, I could control things from here and kind of bring it and put items using the tractor beam into the different bays as they open and close from there. 
Come on back down here, we'll come across, and now we will go up to the command bridge. And here is that airlock I was talking about much earlier in the video. So you can see double opens up, and that would be where the bridge disconnects from the rest of the ship if you need to, to get out. And here, we now have four chairs. We have in the very front, the pilot seat, co-pilot seat, and then like two engineer terminals. They're just called seats right now. They don't really have anything on them. Uh, we'll go ahead and let's go down the ladder actually before we do that. So up there's our four seats. And down here we have a whole little another like habitation deck going on. So shower, shower and sink and all that, cooking area, four more bunks, another table area, and then another little observation deck. And this is that side door I was showing from the outside for if you have to detach the command module. Oh, I can enter the pilot seat from down here uh, to get out. Uh, the door's not in, in put in yet. That doesn't actually work. All right, uh, performance-wise, the ship. The ship's actually surprisingly nimble for the size, scale, scope of this ship. Now, keep in mind, these numbers I'm about to give you, they're all with the new 2.6 flight model, which has changed. Everything's a lot slower than it was. Uh, previously, like a ship going 110, which is what the ship talks out, stops out at is 110 meters per second, would be very, very slow. But 110 is now, it's still slow, but it's not crazy slow. The faster ships out there are doing a close to 200 with the racing ships maybe being a little above 200. Ships like the Saber uh, and my cat's on the keyboard. Ships like say the Saber and the Gladius are somewhere like 170, 175. Uh, so this guy at 110 meters per second isn't too bad. For comparison's sake, the, uh, the Starfarer actually does 70. So it's quite a bit, 40, 45% faster than the Starfarer is. Uh, and that's, that's, that's quite a big performance gain for a ship of roughly the same size. Uh, in terms of boost, so the new boost system is also in with 2.6. Uh, this means you no longer have the traditional cruise speed that we used to. Uh, cruise speed is now something completely different. Um, in fact, it's been completely removed. So other ships, um, the, the, the cruise now just takes off. So you go to your, your max normal speed and then you hold the afterburner and you'll continue to accelerate faster and faster until you get to what was close or what is the new cruise speed. For this ship, the new cruise speed is 550 meters per second, which is not quite as competitive as it 110 meters per second is for normal speed, but it's also not bad. Uh, a lot of the other ships, your, your fighter ships and all of them, they are 600 to 700 with their, their crews. The very fast ships like the Herald are a thousand or a little above a thousand. But again, comparing that to say the Starfarer, the Starfarer's cruise is 350 or 375. Uh, I don't exactly remember. So it's quite a bit faster than the Starfarer. Uh, in terms of turning, maneuverability, angling, and all of that, uh, I feel the ship actually performs much better than I initially thought. Uh, for a ship of this length, where the central pivot point of the ship would be a little in front of, like kind of between the, the back end of the first module and the, the habitation unit, maybe middle of the first module, it has a surprisingly quick turn. Uh, I thought that the, the spin on that axis would be pretty slow, but it actually is reasonably nimble. The rotation's a little slow, but that's not too bad. That's kind of to be expected of it. Is this ship going to be outrunning anything? No, not really. But for what it is, you can actually maneuver this ship reasonably well. It is a little awkward to fly, though, because you are towards the back of the ship, you're also towards the back of the ship and to the left hand side of it. It gives you as the pilot, you have a very odd perspective of the ship. You can't see the actual right hand side of the ship at all. So something coming in on your right, unless you're free looking, you're not gonna see it coming at you at all. So it does take some getting used to to fly this ship just cause there's so much mass in front of you and off to your right hand side with the tractor beam deck and all of that over there. Okay, what do I think about this ship overall now, though? Beyond, put, let's take all that, get, put it together. This is a $290 ship. And while I, I like the aesthetic, I like the Drake ships, I like that they have that construction, rugged, kind of realistic look to them. They're not these fancy looking ships and everything. I like that. I don't, I wouldn't say they look pretty, but they look realistic to me, which I'm, I'm a fan of. 
I like that the fact that it does have some utility to it, like with the tractor beam system, the cargo pad system and everything. And there's talk that you're eventually get the modules that are now cargo modules. There's talk that you're going to be able to swap them out. So perhaps what you can do is you may be able to make the ship into like an exploration vessel. So module one could be a habitat. So expanded crew quarters from more places for people to live and everything. Habitat two could be like a water system, water filtration system, food storage. Habitat three could be extended, um, extended fuel cells and everything so you can travel further. And then maybe habitat four could be a sensor scan for scanning down whatever it is you're looking for in order to explore planets or whatever. And that's proposed possible a way that this ship could modularly be adjusted. There's talks about maybe you'd be able to turn it into a research vessel. Talks about maybe being able to turn it into a combat vessel where kind of you have in pod three, a large like class 10 caliber laser sticking out the top or whatever, or not a laser, but a cannon. Uh, up front in front of that would be a large shield generator in order to give the ship a little more shield power. Uh, number two could be maybe like a loading mechanism, the, the tube mechanism for loading shells into the large gun and then in the number one would be maybe the ammunition storage so you could turn this thing kind of into a battle cruiser or like a sniping ship you know there's a lot of proposed interesting ways you could modify this ship out but they're all just theoretical proposed type ideas and that's my big problem with this ship i am not a big cargo hauling type person I will haul cargo a little bit if I need to make a quick buck here or there. If there's a direct reason I need to get money from A to B or something like that, I'll do some hauling. But I am more in this for the combat role, the exploration role, that type thing. And while I like the idea of a multi-purpose ship that I can adapt for exploration, research, possibly as like a drop ship for taking troops down to the ground, possibly as like a battle cruiser, I really like that idea. They're all just vapor in the air right now they're just they're just possibilities and i don't think i personally am going to risk 290 dollars on a ship that those modules may never come if they do come they might not perform as we want we could end up finding that as an exploration ship this thing might suck even with the correct modules as a battle cruiser this thing might suck even with the correct modules if we even get them we also don't know how good research is going to play out in this game. The research might be super important or it might be completely useless. Exploration might be super important or it might be completely useless. It'll probably be somewhere in between. Mm, excuse me. And because of those unknowns, I have a real tough time looking at this ship and be like, man, I'm, I'm gonna have to buy that thing at that price. If you're someone that is interested in being that entrepreneur, like your your goal is to play the market, move goods, become rich, be whatever of I'm trying to just try to think of something. I was gonna say Don Quixote, which should be completely wrong. Some big well-known trader within within Star Citizen. Well, you have several ships to look at. You have on one hand side you have the hull. The whole series is designed just for hauling cargo. Uh, it's going to be able to haul more cargo than this thing, but that's really all it can do. It's an engine, it's a cockpit, and then it's a spinal cord that you can attach cargo pods on all along. It's not going to do anything but that. You have the Merchantman, which theoretically is going to be similar to this ship in terms of what it can do on the cargo hauling side, but that ship is still very much unknown. It's nothing more than a concept. We have some base concept designs. We understand what it is they're looking to do, but we haven't seen anything beyond that. And then below that, you kind of have the Freelancer, and the Freelancer just doesn't compete with this ship at all in terms of scale and scope. So if you're someone that's looking to do that, you want to be that that salesperson that you want to make your money through trade and everything well then the caterpillar is an interesting look at consideration to buy you'll be able to haul a fair bit of cargo but it also gives you utility so if you maybe are only going to buy one big expensive ship you want you want to have one big expensive ship to get yourself going well then the caterpillar is probably a pretty smart purchase because you'll have that cargo hauling capacity but you'll also have some utility that the haul series won't have. It's still $290. It's still a whole bunch of unknowns of how much that utility will bring. But I can tell you the whole series, I don't think has a tractor beam. It doesn't have any way of like bringing cargo in because it's hauling preloaded cargo containers. 
yeah, then the caterpillar is interesting. But boy, that's that's a lot of money to risk on interesting without fully knowing. And so I'm hesitant on this ship, if you haven't caught on. I, I, I like the design. I like the concept of it. I like the proposed promise of it. I love the utility conceptually of it. I just, $290 is a lot to risk on that concept. And that's where I'm very hesitant. So hopefully that gives you guys a good idea on the Caterpillar. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Until next time, though, this has been Power. Thanks for watching.